Are you kidding me? After dipping 1.86% from its all-time high, the S&P 500 is only 0.76% or less than 36 points from its all-time high and only about 18.5 points from its all-time closing high. So where is the crash or the correction? Welcome to another S&P 500 analysis. This is the weekly edition, and today is November 12, 2021. As many of you already know, in this channel, we use the market internals and the sentiment to objectively prepare for what the S&P 500 might do. You might have heard many talking heads and fools on social media such as YouTube and Twitter telling us a crash is starting. But the market-generated information that we've been watching in this channel have been telling us to be prepared for a pullback, but nothing about a crash or a correction. In this S&P 500 analysis, we'll look at the indexes, the internals, sentiments, and see what they are telling us where the S&P 500 might be headed. Then we will look at the 10-year yield to see where the interest rate could be heading and what that might do to the U.S. dollar the oil market, and the precious metal market. So let's get started. From this weekly chart of the S&P 500, as you can see, the week it lost just under 15 points or a third of a percent. For the range, it had a 84 point range. And right now it's printed a uh, inside week. And the price is still one time framing up and also above this 10 week and also the 40 week moving average and still near the uh, upper range of this channel. So far as the weekly uh, trend is concerned, it is still on an uptrend. Looking at the sentiment chart, we see the VIX was moving up at the beginning of the week while the S&P 500 was pulling back. But after Wednesday, the market participants became less fearful and the put call ratio dipped back below 0.5 indicating the market participant are taking on risk once again. The up-down volume ratio also shows more up volume than down volume for the last two trading sessions. And the daily advance decline also show a modest margin of advancing issue over the declining issues. The number of new 52-week highs still outnumber the new 52-week low by a margin of 105 on Friday. And we did not see any divergence between the cumulative AD line and the S&P 500. For the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ 100 lost 102 points or 0.63% for the week. It also finished the week with a positive up-down volume ratio with more advancing issues than declining issues. It also ended the week with 76 more new 52-week high than 52-week low. And in the short term, there is no significant divergence other than the prior slight positive divergence between the cumulative AD line and the NASDAQ 100. Now let's go take a look at the price action of the indexes. Now on this daily chart of the S&P 500, we see it close above this 127 extension. Remember in a midweek analysis, we map out a uh, possible downside scenario for it to pull back to this 4545 level. And a possible upside scenario is up to this uh, upper channel trend line which in confluence with the uh, 141 extension somewhere around 47.46. So we're essentially looking for an upside target of somewhere around 47.50. And right now, essentially, we're still watching these two possible scenarios to play out next week, depending on the direction of the S&P 500. And for the NASDAQ 100, we're expecting a continuation of a pullback down to this pivot high here, somewhere around this 15,701 level. And for a upside scenario, was essentially come up, break this channel trend line and move up to this 127 extension above this 16,445 and possibly put in a new all-time high. So right now with the recent price action, that has not changed our expectation of the upside and the downside scenario. The Russell 2000 pulled back a bit after it made a uh, new all-time high. And the scenario that we were watching on the downside was essentially for it to pull back to this previous all-time high somewhere around 2360. 
And a uh, continuation on the upside would be this 1x extension at 2498 or close to this 2500 level. So we'll continue to watch these uh, two possible scenarios for the coming week. And the Dow Jones Transportation continue to push higher. And we're essentially looking for the Dow Jones Transportation to close at above this high to make it legitimate. And that would be above 17,039.38. Because this crazy move was uh, due to uh, Avis. So the uh, upside scenario is for it to close with a new all-time high above the 17,039. And a pullback to the prior level here, which is this prior high, somewhere around 16,170. The Dow Jones Industrial closed right near this uh, upper trend line here on the uh, upper channel trend line after pulling back from the uh, recent all-time high. So right now, the scenario is to see what it pull back here and test this 35,625. And if that doesn't hold, then we'll be uh, looking for it to come down to test this 35,150 area. And on the upside scenario, essentially push up Take out this 1x uh, extension and make a new all-time high and move up toward this uh, 37,000 level. And the New York Stock Exchange Composite Index, the uh, broader market index, it is only a quarter of a percent from this all-time closing high here and uh, somewhere around 45 points. One possible upside target for this index is up here at this 1x extension, somewhere around 17,791. And if it decides to pull back, then we're essentially looking for this somewhere around this uh, 16,935 area. And if it doesn't hold that level, then we're essentially looking for this index to pull back down to this consolidation area, the upper edge, near this uh, 16,708. Now let's go and take a look at the 10-year uh, yield, U.S. dollar, oil, silver, and the gold market. The 10-year yield continued to move up and it closed at 1.582 on Friday. We'll continue to monitor for the possible move up here to this 1.765. And the U.S. dollar continued to move up, although it pulled back slightly on Friday and closed at 95.130. We expect to see it uh, continue to move up toward this 95.70 level here. If it does pull back, then we're essentially looking at this 94.08. And as the U.S. dollar uh, move up, we see the oil prices uh, pulling back. So it could uh, come down and possibly test this 76.98 or near that $77 level. It uh, seems to be encounter some resistance here somewhere up at this 85 area. So if it could push through this 85, then we'd be uh, looking at the possibility of moving up to this $90 area at $90.43. And for silver, as you can see, that it booked to this inverted head and shoulder pattern here right now, it is sitting above this uh, neckline here and sitting close at $25.34. So we're going to watch this $26.67, the uh, first level of potential resistance to see what it be able to get to. And if it does, and we're essentially monitoring this 100% major move, at uh, 28.43. Now, for a potential fake out downside move, then we uh, be watching this 22.72. And Go also broke out of its uh, inverted head and shoulder pattern. And right now, it's chopping inside of this price zone between 18.46 and uh, 18.70 area. So, if you could break through this uh, zone here, then we're basically looking for the next potential target level around 19.23. And the 100% uh, major move for this inverted head and shoulder pattern is somewhere around 1995. Now let's go and take a look at the ETF for the S&P 500, the SPY. For the SPY, the ETF for the S&P 500, we see uh, last week we we're talking about this zone here between the uh, 466 and a half to 467. As you can see on Friday, it closed right near that 467 area close at 467.26. So for the coming week, we would be uh, watching for a possible move up on the upside scenario to this uh, 469.50 to uh, 470. And then on the downside scenario, it's extended it back down to this 461.50 to 461, this price zone here. 
for the QQQ, the ETF for the uh, NASDAQ 100, uh, the price came up to this price zone that we talked about during the midweek uh, video, somewhere near this uh, 395 and 395 and a half area. So for the coming week, we'll be uh, watching to see what the price continue to move up into this price zone here between uh, 399 and uh, 398 and a half or so. And on the downside is a pullback to this 387 and a half to 387 at this price zone here. And for the Russell 2000 ETF, the IWM, we're essentially watching to be able to move up here to this uh, 24088 uh, price zone here. And uh, if it's uh, continue to pull back, then we'd be uh, looking for a possible move down to this 234 level. Finally, looking at the ES, the E mini S&P 500 market profile chart. Remember we said to watch this pull high made on November the 10th to get taken out. And when it does, we'll likely see the S&P 500 to come up as well. And we also said to keep an eye on a possible trap if it comes up and take out this poor high before cleaning out these unfinished business down here, the single print and poor low. So right now we saw the uh, ES come up and took out this poor high on Friday, but it also left a poor high on Friday and a set of single print as well as poor low. So next week we'll be watching to see what the ES continue to push higher and get up to this 4700 level and see what it be able to push through to a new all-time high. If it's unable to push through a new all-time high, then look for a pullback, clean up the single print and this poor low, as well as all these unfinished business down here. And that will drag the ES down to the 4600 level. In summary, the S&P 500 pulled back slightly after five consecutive weeks of new weekly all-time high. The sentiment still show the market participant are willing to take on risks, and the internal are not showing weakness that points to a major correction. The price action from the indexes and the S&P 500 futures are indicating more upside could come and a possibility of another new high for the S&P 500 is still in the cart. At the current elevated level, it could be risky to initiate long position unless you are a good stock picker. Better dip buying location might be near the 4600 and 4545 level. So good luck and be careful. If you are new to this channel and have not subscribed, click the subscribe and be sure to smash that thumbs up to let me know you found value from my video and to help me promote and share this video. Thank you for watching and stay safe.